When Angular JS first came out in 2009, uh, a lot of people were really impressed by the two-way data binding feature. That was the catchphrase that blew a lot of people's minds. And Angular kind of became synonymous with two-way data binding. What does Angular do? It does two-way data binding. And for better or for worse, people have loved that concept of having data be a part of your component and then bind it to the view and then have the view actually bind it back to the data in the component. So it was binding it both ways. What we've looked at in Angular 2 plus so far is one way data binding. You add the data in your component and then access it in the view. Well, two way data binding is actually possible in Angular 2 plus also, but it is not very often used. It's not as much used as people try to, at least with Angular 1, but it is there if you want to use it. Two-way data binding comes into play when you have forms, when you have input fields, for example, a text input, if you enter something, you're basically adding data to the view and then you want the component, the backing component, to take the value from the view. And then let's say you are using that value in some other portion in the view, then it should update that portion as well. So you're basically looking at view updating the data in the component and then the data in the component updating the view back. Let's demonstrate that by a simple text box. I'm gonna close the address component because I think we're done with this for now and I don't wanna make more changes to this at this point. What I'm gonna do is go to the app.component.ts. This is like the root component here. And uh, let me add a text box to app component.html. I'm gonna say input type equals text. Save and here's our text box. Nothing happens right now because I haven't mapped it to anything really. What I could do is add a member variable here in my input component. Let's say I have a input text, which is a string and uh, let's say I give it an initial value and in my app component, I say value equals, this is input text. So put this here. Again, what's gonna happen is you get the value directly. So in order to have Angular evaluate this, I'm gonna put this inside a box so that it gets the value over here, okay? Now, what happens is if I were to change this, let's say I also have input text printed out as is over here, it's an initial value. If I were to change this, I'm changing the input in the text box but I'm not actually changing the actual value in the component because right now there's only one way data binding that's happening, okay? What I'm doing over here with the box is just one way data binding. I'm not having Angular update the input text if the text input value changes. All I'm asking Angular to do is when the input loads, I'm asking it to set the value, which is the input text that I've put over here. In order to achieve two-way data binding, I'm gonna use another directive that comes out of the box with Angular, and that's called ng-model. ng-model is an Angular directive that lets you do two-way data binding. In order to use this directive called ng-model, I need to make one other change, and that change requires a knowledge of modules in Angular, which we haven't really covered in a whole lot of detail. We looked at modules uh, in the previous unit when we looked at app.modules.ts. We've glossed over the details here, but we just looked at the fact that there was a module that was containing all the components and directives you know, that you wrote. Using this directive requires you to import a standard Angular module. Don't worry too much about the details of this. We will be covering what modules are and what this particular import is in a subsequent unit. But for now, what you would need to do is import 
the farms module. I'm basically adding a module, a class import in the imports section of my ng module. And I'm going to add the right import here to import the farms module from angular slash farms. This is a class import and this is an angular import. Essentially, farms module is an out of the box module that comes with angular, but it doesn't get included in the angular CLI project that's generated because not everybody really needs farms. So if you need to use the farm feature of angular, you need to import the farms module in your application module. Again, don't worry too much about the details. We'll cover modules and imports in a subsequent unit. But this is required for us to use the ng model directive. Okay, so with this, if I were to put this in a box so that it's evaluating the input text, well, nothing changes. It loads the default value, it loads the initial value, but then nothing changes. This is because I am still using one way data binding by these square brackets. You remember I told you the square bracket is basically just letting Angular know to look up the value from the component rather than just treat this thing as an inline value, as a string called input text. So the, thanks to this square bracket, Angular says, okay, now I gotta get the value from the component. But it's not pushing the value back to the component if this thing changes. That's not good. We wanna be able to make these changes and have the Angular take the updated text box value and populate the component property. Now to do that, I use another syntax, which is something like this. It's basically parentheses inside a square bracket. Now, if I were to make the change, you notice there is two-way data binding in place. This is how ng model works. In order to achieve two-way data binding, you need to have an input, that's for sure, because one way of that data binding is data going from the view to the component. And an easy way to get user input and have the user change the data is by providing something like a text box. We have the text box and you have bound it, two-way bound it to the component the property of the component specifically. And you do that by using a, a directive called ng-model. In order to use ng-model, you need to import the module, forms module, into your app module where the component resides. And secondly, you need to use ng-model with this syntax, which looks like a square bracket and the parentheses, which I will explain in a little bit. But you gotta use this syntax in order to achieve two-way data binding in your input text. And now, what's happening is, you make a change in your text box, two-way data binding causes the app component input text property to be updated. And because of one-way data binding, this input text is bound to that property. So when the property changes, the view gets updated, which is what's happening over here. So we have achieved true two-way data binding. Let's take a minute to examine the syntax, the square bracket and the parentheses. This is what's popularly referred to as banana in a box. Okay, that's the mnemonic that's used to remember the syntax because I often forget whether it sh I should put the parentheses first or the square bracket first. The banana in the box indicates that there's a box outside and within that box, this is a banana, with the parentheses, right? It looks like a banana. So what does this signify? What is this banana in a box? What does it signify? We've looked at the square bracket to indicate Angular picking up a value from the component and using it in the view, all right? And we were able to do that without this parentheses. The ng model with just a square bracket was able to get the value from the component and show it in the, show it in the view, in the text box. We also looked at the click event handler in the address card component. You see here, we added this parentheses to indicate that there is something that happens in the view which needs to execute the component. So this is basically data flow the other way. A view event causes something to happen to the component. So we are looking at two directions here. 
the square bracket indicates one direction, which is data flowing from the component to the view. And then the parentheses indicates the second direction, the opposite direction, where data is in a way flowing from the view to the component. Well, guess what? This is two-way data binding. Data needs to flow both ways. So this convention that has been picked is basically using both. You want to use the square bracket to indicate one way of data flow, and then the parentheses to indicate the other way of data flow. But the syntax, of course, enforces that there is a one particular order. You got to put the square bracket outside and the parentheses inside, which is where the banana in the box mnemonic is helpful. But that's all there is. It's just a syntax convention. You use this syntax in this convention in order to use ng model in order to be able to do data binding.